Hello and welcome to the first episode of Should You Buy, a series designed to help you save money and know the ships in Star Citizen better. We'll talk about the pros and cons of each ship, is it worth buying with in-game money and real money. Today's ship is Star Citizen's Jack of All Trades. I've gone on record saying that everyone needs one, the Drake Interplanetary Cutlass Black. Now starting off, what are the biggest pros and cons of the Cuddy Black? Pro number one, the Cutlass may look large and in charge as one of Star Citizen's best medium fighters, but it moves unlike any other ship. If you know how to toggle your VTOL, this thing can pull off some unbelievable maneuvers. In my opinion, this is the Cutlass's greatest strength. Landed and someone surprised attacks you, poof, you're gone. Interdicted and a Mantis tries to catch you, not a problem. There's only one ship in the game that can keep up with you and only if they're flying perfectly, and that's the car to all. Number two, the open concept of the Cutlass Bay makes it ideal for carrying cargo, friends, loot, and anything you can shove inside its 46 SCU bay. It may be true that it isn't a good dedicated hauler, considering even the Hall A carries 64 SCU, but it's fairly comparable. The Cutlass just is one of those ships that feels so easy to get on and off of without walking through a hundred doors. And when you're in a hot zone or leaving one, this can be the difference between life and death. Number three, the fighting capabilities are often overlooked in the Cutlass, but with some decent piloting skill and a turret gunner, I think this thing can be deadly. Paired with a massive capacitor, well-placed MFDs, tons of missiles, and the ability to dip out of any fight it can't handle, when used right, the Cutlass becomes absolutely dangerous on the battlefield. Number 4, the Size 2 Quantum Drive is a massive pro. If you're still flying around with a Size 1 Quantum Drive instead of a Size 2, specifically XL1 or Crossfield, what are you doing? It is game-changing, and I mean that literally. Being able to get from one side of Stanton to another in just a few minutes is a massive pro. Number 5, this thing can fit a variety of ground vehicles in, including the ROC Rock, the STV, Cyclones, and even a Fury or two if you're feeling really brave. Number 6, it has internal storage that can be used by all players on board. This means quick transferring of items between you and your crew without having to drop them on the ground and get cluttered. And finally, the bed, which we all know bed logging has issues, but when bed logging works, it is a phenomenal plus. Now the cons. Back to the Cuddy's greatest strength, we have its greatest weakness. Lose one of these in a fight and you're basically as good as done. This is especially hard when you're fighting someone who knows how to outturn a cutlass, or you fight someone who's missile happy and your decoys just decide not to work. If you do lose an engine, your best option is to abandon ship most of the time. Mixed with that and the current repair bug means that even if you may get to a hangar to repair, your engine is probably not going to be properly fixed and you'll have to reclaim the ship. Additionally, losing a front wing or engine means losing guns. This is a problem that a lot of ships in combat don't have, such as the Vanguard, when taking too much damage. So, these are things to consider about the combat capabilities of the Cutlass. The Cuddy doesn't have great defensive capabilities. Yes, it has a big cross-section, and yes, it can die fairly quickly. But remember the VTOL. This is where the Cuddy makes up for that. When in doubt, VTOL out. Number two, lowish to medium fuel is not a huge con, but it is something you want to be mindful of when flying the Cuddy. Big QT jumps like R Corp to Microtech is basically going to require a refuel before jumping again. Flying for about 30 minutes in the Cuddy, you'll be needing to gas up soon. And number four, the final con is it's not in your fleet right now. So should I buy the Cutlass Black? Taking into consideration all of the information we just got. Firstly, in-game, coming in at a 1,385,300 AUEC. It's going to get an in-game purchase rating of 10 out of 10. Don't like the look of Drake? Think the ships are too smelly for you? I still believe this ship is worth having in your fleet by far. Coming up next for a hundred dollars or a hundred and ten because the price increase at the end of the month, the Cutlass is going to get a seven out of ten rating for buying with real money. 
This is a truly blessed rating for me, considering I'll always push you to buy ships in-game, and that the in-game price is just such a good deal. And that's it. Thanks so much for watching, and make sure to subscribe for more videos like this. These are always going to be quick, concise, and easy to follow. If you have any other questions about the Cutlass Black, make sure to leave them in the comments down below. Thanks again for watching, and this is Burks signing off.